Dear Diary, I'm sorry. It has been too long. The whole December just slipped from me. And here we are, already in February. Only if we could turn back the time. But there are also some good news. I finished two objects. One is a present for a friend. And another one is a simple garment. I am also nearly done with my endless sweater. <laughs> Hope you like what I knit. Now let's talk about the projects some more. Hello and welcome to Knitting Diary aka Kicknuts and Knits. My name is Martina and this is I think episode 5 or 6, I'm not pretty sure which one it is. And this is my January slash December recap because I did not make any December recap since I was doing the what I have knit in 2023 year kind of video. So today I'm going to be talking about some finished objects. I have two finished objects and one work in progress which <laughs> I hope finally we'll get done this these days, maybe even this weekend, because I just want to wear it. It's getting too warm <laughs> in Germany, so let's go. The first finished object that I have here is this beautiful bunny, which is a present for a friend from high school. Uh, we met during the Christmas and she kindly asked me to knit for her a kind of a plushie because she saw them on the internet. I do use my Instagram account as, uh, <laughs> you, you can say, uh, like kind of an album for all of my things that I knit. And this was one of the photos that, uh, well, there were some photos of some plushies that I knitted for friends or for anyone that ordered them online and she asked me to make a bunny. So I sent her some patterns that I had in my uh, gallery, you can say, in my pattern stash because not only do I have my yarn stash, I also have my pattern stash which is as huge as my yarn stash. That's my um, yarn um, D station, my yarn. So that's also some kind of mini-series that's going on on this channel and that's the d stash. <sighs> there will be a new video soon coming, so if you are interested in this kind of, uh, well, topic and this kind of content, please do go there and watch, it will be fun. I have loads of yarn, it's full, this wardrobe, <laughs> it's full of yarn, so it will be nice. And I still ordered some yarn, yeah. <laughs> but back to the bunny. I will show it on the camera much up close. So it's this lovely plushie, which is probably like 40 or 50 centimeter long. It's, it's quite big, in all honesty. And that's uh, because uh, despite the pattern telling me to use smaller needle, I was using a completely different yarn because this bunny is originally knitted in like a normal yarn <laughs> and I decided to do it in plush so it's much more uh, tactile for the kit to play with also it can be squished, it can be you know like rubbed against your face and nothing happens also you can throw it into the washer and wash it it's completely fine and the yarn that I used for this one is the sheepies and it's the it's the fluff I think I have no idea I will put it on the screen which yarn it is so it the uh, it's the sheepies and the pyjama <laughs> is just some budget acrylic yarn it's the name <laughs> 
so it has this cute little tail that I added. It's I didn't find it in the pattern. The bunny doesn't actually have a tail. But I thought it would be really weird to have a bunny without a tail. And also it kind of reminds me of a mouse and not a teddy bear <laughs> or a bunny. So I decided, yeah, it needs a tail, otherwise it's a mouse. You have no idea what kind of <laughs> animal this is. If you cannot see the tail, you see, I, I, I see that it has a bunny tail. So it's a bunny and if it had a, like a longer tail, it would be a mice. Yeah, so we have a little Jerry here, <laughs> which is um, yeah, catfishing as a bunny. <laughs> and since this toy was kind of plain, I decided to embroider a little ship. First, I wanted to embroider the name of the kid. It's not my friend's kit, actually, I forgot to say this. It's uh, her sister's third kit, who is finally a boy. She has uh, two girls, which are lovely and beautiful, and now they did try for a long time for a boy. And finally, they had the luck to have the first boy in the family, because in her family, everybody has only girls. And in my family, everybody has boys. And now we finally switched. So finally in my family, there's someone who has a girl. And in her family, finally somebody has a boy. And she saw that I was knitting all of the toys for my nephews. And now also for my niece. So she asked me to do this for her. <laughs> Which I really gladly did. I made this probably in two days. And this type of toy... <laughs> I will put the pattern, of course, on the screen and everything, so you can knit it, search for it. Uh, it's still available, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, it is. It's from a magazine, so you, you can search for it on the internet. It's still there. And these type of toys and dolls, they are knitted flat. It's uh, basically because you have to get a tight gauge. And also because you can do the shaping much more easily than if you've just knitted in the round. So if you know Alan Dart, you know all of his toys are knitted just flat. I've been lucky enough to have the chance to knit some of his toys. And I've knitted some for my nephews. One of these, I have a nephew also in Georgia because my husband, he's from Georgia and I needed one for the nephew, his brother's son also, and we send it to Georgia and he loves it. It, uh, it was the Peter the Rabbit from Beatrix Potter. Unfortunately, uh, those patterns haven't been available for a long, long time, but I think they're now, if you buy the book, because there was a book that came out, uh, Beatrix Potter uh, Magical World or something like that. I'm not sure. I will have to search for it and I will put it on the screen. But at the time when I knitted that, I was lucky because my friend <laughs> gave me the pattern. She had it and she sent it to me because she knew I wanted to make the Peter the Rabbit because my nephew is quite cute and loves the Peter the Rabbit. So, I'm sorry, so I decided to make him one and thankfully I had the chance to do it. But except for those, I also did, also from the Beatrix folder, the Piglet, <laughs> Mr. Piglet Bland, I think it's his name. I finished him uh, last year, I think in February or March, and it was also for another nephew and he loves it. He plays with it, it's at the grandma's place and he has it there, so every time he comes over to grandma, my mother, he plays with the piglet. <laughs> but back to the bunny, so this one also <laughs> was knitted flat uh, and it was kind of a nice construction because you first you do the legs, they're just separate, you know, you do the hands also and then uh well these hands they are knitted from here to here so actually you start with the pajamas up here 
you just add stitches so it makes a bigger piece of fabric and then you do one row of pearls in here and then you switch to the boucle yarn and you finish and at the end you usually do not uh, cast off or anything you just thread the yarn through your stitches one or two times and pull it pushes them all together and creates this like it, it's quite seamless you cannot see anything and you I usually just cut a longer tail so I can also sew up the toy so the same goes for the head which was kind of it's always interesting to make a new animal I have made some rabbits but it was uh, not ones from the well from this uh, one two three <laughs> I've made quite few rabbits but all of them are made differently and with this one unfortunately I since it's in boucle and I cannot see the increases which you do uh, like around his snout I could not see them so I didn't know where exactly <laughs> where, where his eyes were supposed to be and I do think I did not put them in the correct place as you can see I think I have the head like twisted it's it's not in the correct place but in the end it did work out after I put in the years years and the ears you start here and you increase 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 and then you decrease 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 <laughs> and then you change to the to the pink which is just some it's brushed acrylic yarn that I have from Action it's really cheap I I did knit a summery t-shirt in this well, back when we were still living in Belgium because the summers were kind of rainy and cold and drafty so I needed this kind of t-shirt and I still had some leftovers so I used this for this beautiful bunny and then you just sew up around the edges they are hollow inside so the kid can chew on them do anything they want I used the materials that you can toss it into the washing machine and nothing happens to the toy I made sure that I did secure everything also the um, safety eyes they are done properly nothing is sticking out they cannot get out I tried <laughs> So it's kind of bulletproof when you ask me, but I do have nephews who are small and I do know that they chew on things, they push apart some things and a few years ago I did have the chance to crochet a huge teddy bear for, for, for my nephew. It was like a meter long, it was really huge because he was crying about the fact he was really upset about the fact that his brother had a huge teddy bear and he did not so I took it upon myself to knit him well I did crochet it and it's one of these teddy bears that are supposed to be like sleepy sleepy teddy bears they have a hat and everything so I omitted the hat and I just did for him a teddy bear in a pyjama like a little bit like this one but it was in this plush rich dolphin Himalaya yarn and I did sew up everything with a clear thread I did not use the plush Himalayan uh, yarn because I knew you can pull it apart quite easily yeah and it doesn't hold as strong as it should and the boy chewed it up the old the whole yarn the, the the plain like stitching yarn that you have like when you have a hole in your garment and you want to sew it up yeah he tore it so <laughs> well, yeah kids can chew through everything but he loves the, the teddy bear dearly i usually just mend it every time i come over i still have some leftover yarn so usually every time we are there we just meant toys, <laughs> my husband and I. 
it has been quite a ride with these two. <laughs> and now they got a new sister, so I'm still knitting a bunny for her. And ever since I started the bunny, I, I don't like it anymore. So it's not this bunny, it's another bunny. And if you watched my Vlogmas and also the Vlogtober, that's how long I have been knitting the bunny. Since October 2023 and it's still not done and I think I will have to frog the progress, the project completely. Because it doesn't give me joy anymore, I don't think the kid will like it. So I will just have to knit her something else and I do have some plans for what I want to knit for her. It's just not that kind of bunny that I'm doing right now. Yes, so this is the first finished object that I have for the year 2024. Yeah, and after I finished this bunny, I was like, yeah, it's getting quite cold in here. We got some snow in Germany, which quickly <laughs> thawed. And then we had a lot of rain, but still, it's kind of drafty. It's really cold. It gets from 0, 5 to 10 at the day. Not now. Right now we are in the spring. You can hear the birds chirping in the trees and I love this. Not unless. <laughs> Welcome to my petite knit time of the year. And I did jump on the wagon <laughs> of the petite knit. Do I like it? Yeah, that's a difficult question. For me, this scarf is something that I do not find as useful as I should. It's nice. But I... <laughs> I like my shawls big and huge, so big that you cannot turn your head, so big that it makes it kind of difficult to move around, you're just wrapped in a huge blanket. I love my huge, huge shawls that I have knitted. One, well, I knitted two in the last year, you know, it, it, it was amazing and I use them as blankets i cover with them in the car in the morning when we go to the work i just throw it throw them on and it's like a warm hug you know and this this is the sophie scarf yeah <laughs> if you watch my mini knitting diary which is a series here also where i just make the videos that are just about one project you've seen this one and i loved knitting it it took me only four hours to knit because it's kind of simple it's just a garter stitch you just uh increase every this and this amount of rows it's it's straightforward it's it's a garter stitches you just knit and for me as a continental uh, knitter it's really easy but <laughs> does it fulfill my artistic little me no it's too plain and some time ago when i was still doing some commissions that i was actually getting paid for <laughs> because now i'm also doing some commissions but I don't get paid, it's for friends or family, so I don't ask for money from them. Uh, I used to make a lot of these small shawls, of course they were like a bigger size of the mini shawl, yeah. So the increases were much more steep and it was much wider and I made them like double knitted, double sided knits. So it was perfect for the spring and it was giving me much more with the color work and the thing that I had to think, the thing that I had to think, yeah, my English is perfect, sorry. <laughs> so, knitting this, which is like perfect for a capsule wardrobe, I do not think it's something that I would just like, you know, like, oh, I'm, I'm so cold, 
and this is now a pun for me, yeah, I'm dissing myself. I'm so cold, I will put this on. No, it doesn't help. <laughs> it's good if you have a sore throat, which in Germany, if, if you know like the German stereotypes, it's when you have a cold, you put on a scarf. It's drafty, you put on a scarf. It's raining, you put on a scarf and drink some tea. So yes, in this case, it's perfect for my German stereotypes. I'm in Germany. I'm not German, <laughs> but right now I'm living and working in Germany, so yes, it's perfect for the German stereotypes. But for me, as no, also this style, it kind of reminds me of, you know, um, I'm French and I go by a baguette, <laughs> which is lovely. Do not, do not take this the wrong way. I love everything I knit. That's why I knit it. So. <laughs> I just think that I need to sometimes laugh at myself because sometimes I do not think about the things I want to knit like beforehand and then I knit them and I have no use for them. Yeah, <laughs> but this one, yeah, why I'm saying that I have no use for them? Well, not in this, uh, in this straightforward manner, I do not. What I would do is I would just use it as a, well, for my hair. For my hair, it's fine. It's fine for my hair. <laughs> Completely acceptable, but definitely not for my, um, for my neck. And that's because I despise anything that's too, too narrow and too tight on my neck so I cannot breathe. Ever since I was a little kid I had this problem with my neck when I could not get anything uh, too tightly around my neck and <laughs> that's also why I cannot watch uh, those movies where they show like somebody you know like sl slits somebody's throat which are too violent for me so this is nice you know it gives me the I just came out from the tulip field in Amsterdam and I feel beautiful so yes like this I will most definitely wear it I will most definitely wear it as a bow that I will just tie a bow and I know that Petit Knit also has the simple bow or I have no idea what it's called and I have always wanted to knit that one so <laughs> I knit myself a Sophie scarf and now I have a bow in my hair. Yeah, good. <laughs> it works. It always works. Yes. And today I'm really cheery and it's because I had a huge coffee. We went to Starbucks. <laughs> we went to France. And every time we go to France, we used to just park in uh, one of the like parking garages that's like straight onto the on the on the square in the historic part of the town we used to go and it's in Alsace and when you came come out of the parking lot the parking garage there's Starbucks so every time we just go inside or there are some Starbucks and just walk around the town and today we felt like no it's today for something sweet so we got two slices of cake one was the carrot cake and one was a chocolate something cake and it was so sweet that I feel like a kid on crack <sighs> so excuse my bursts of energy and everything it's not probably gonna get better <laughs> Only worse, only worse, because the sugar is just getting into my system. So, if you've been with me for a longer time, <laughs> you may remember that during the Christmas time, in the beginning of December, I decided to knit myself some Christmas sweater. Did I finish it? No. <laughs> No, never. I never finish my projects on time. So, I am showing you the finished parts that I have 
of my Endless Winter Sweater, which is a free pattern by Drops. And it's one of these Norwegian all over color work sweaters that I've always loved and always wanted to do one. But I just thought that my skills or the lack of my skills <laughs> is the main problem. So I always like, no, 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 not now, no. It's not a work or not a project for me. But yeah, I was like, heck it, I will do it. <laughs> so, this is the body. And you can see, like, this is, I guess, the back. Yeah, this is the back. So it goes like this, yeah. So here on your chest, you have this beautiful, beautiful color work. I hope you can see it. The front, I was using long floats, so you cannot actually see it in its true huge <laughs> size. And these are steaks. So this will be steaked for the sleeves. And if I say that I finished this still in December and I'm only missing the sleeves, yeah. I have been knitting two sleeves for a month while I knitted this in like 10 days. Why? You ask why? Because it's spring in Germany, which means you have approximately, well, one, two, three, well, probably ten hours of light, and the rest is just darkness, which is not good for my bad eyesight, which is already terrible. Um, I am wearing glasses, but uh, my glasses and the bad sight I have is mainly connected with the sugar level I, level I have in my body and also the, the blood pressure. So during the winter my glasses are too strong for me. And I cannot wear my not as strong glasses because they're not strong enough. My old glasses because they're not strong enough. So right now I'm left like in this blind period of time when I do not see clearly anything after the sunset. <laughs> so yeah, but in uh, so this one got finished. It I started it in uh, in December, in the beginning of December. But unfortunately, I was sick. I could not knit on it. So I knitted from I think like the fifteenth of December and finished it after Christmas. So that was done. And we were spending the Christmas in Slovakia, so while we traveled and everything, I didn't feel like knitting this beauty, and it's a complete beast. <sighs> I finished this a few days ago. It's the first sleeve that I have done. And the main reason why I was so slow on the, on the sleeves is because the, the drops design, they do not make like this row after or row patterns. They just tell you like, on the next row, please increase 45 stitches accordingly. And then increase on each side of your stitch marker every fourth row while doing a pattern. For my size, please do uh, increase every third and fourth row. So, too difficult for me in my head, but I found some, uh, some way to do this without getting mad. And the main reason why I stopped, well, probably here, and didn't knit on it for like a week, is because I thought oh, I messed up and I didn't increase enough. <sighs> what happened was that I forgot that I still have like 20 rows of another pattern where I can still increase and like make all the stitch count that I need. So this, I was knitting this for probably three weeks. 
I have knitted this in two days. And it's beautiful. I'm knitting this in the drops. Well, it's drops design, so I use drops. And also it's the most affordable for me. So this one, uh, the white, is drops flora held together with uh, alpaca brushed silk. Amazing. <laughs> and the green one, it's uh, it's Mayflower number, uh, Mayflower first class, held together with alpaca brushed silk. And the Mayflower, maybe you can see the marbling, but the Mayflower is kind of a little bit darker and like this earthy tone. And uh, the brushed silk is a little bit uh, brighter and much, uh, much vibrant and held together. They they look amazing. Yes, I have them here. So this is the main flower. You can see it's kind of like dark and and, and earthy and oh, just anything and everything. And this one, it's it's it's. Oh, I don't have words. I love this yarn. And held together, they create this beauty. It's... Oh, I cannot wait to wear this. <laughs> but the closer I am to finishing the sleeve, the more I am afraid of cutting into my knit. Because the sleeves are sticks so these lines the sticking uh well actually means that you have to reinforce the edges that you have here you can see those lines yeah just the plain <sighs> knit here and you have to reinforce the edges and then you will cut it and I'm not in my cutting era yet. Maybe I will get to the era with this project, but I'm incredibly worried about cutting into, into so many hours of, of knitting and just... <sighs> Do you know how many hours this took? Too many to count, too, too many. I remember that I spent like three days, three days, like from the five, p.m. till like 2 a.m. just knitting just plain knitting and <coughs> and now I have to cut it <laughs> no no I'm too scared but what I also wanted to show you is the, bro the, the wrong side of the sweater which is absolutely mesmerizing so the point for uh, with the Norwegian knits and everything is so uh, not having any kind of uh, block of solid color every time you have these specs I'm pretty sure it has a name so it creates this double layered kind of fabric but I do not like the long you see floats. I'm afraid that I will nick on them. I'm afraid that uh, they will get torn. So, after a few, few rows, you can see the long floats here, I decided to catch every float in the next row. And it created this really beautiful marble. And also in here, in the upper part, I was catching the yarn with every on every second stitch it got caught so I can explain a little bit better on the sleeve right now I'm doing the specs and it's uh, one white three green ones and a white again and it always repeats so white three green white three green so I do white green I catch a float underneath the green 
then do another green and the white and it creates this no floats no visible floats and the fabric is much more it's not as stiff as blush <laughs> it's it's not uh, it's not thin it's thick yeah that's the word I was searching for so it's this thick thick fabric yeah it, I'm so close to finish the to finishing this so that will be one of the projects that will get off my needles definitely this this next month I hope I will get it done before February 14 not because it's uh it's the Valentine's Day but because I do have some projects that I would like to make these days and one of those is I'm making custom dolls for my co-worker co-worker <laughs> a colleague of mine so <laughs> Uh, he has two beautiful daughters and he thought it would be nice to make like a like dolls. It's basically a small business uh, kind of helping out another small business. He also has a small business. I will put a link down below. So if you like, uh, he works with wood. So if you like some wooden accessories, he has really interesting things from wood. So go and look at his page. He has an Etsy shop, I think. Yes, an Etsy shop. So please go and support him. He's amazing in woodwork. So he asked me to make him two dolls, which are the replicas of his daughters. And I haven't been doing anything crochet probably in a year. And I started only to find out that I forgot how to crochet. I forgot all of the terms. I forgot how to... Like, it's like riding a bike, you know, in, in the beginning and you're like, oh no, I can't do this. And then you're like, ah, it's fine. So the same happened to me with the crochet. And I wanted to start with the dolls last, last Sunday. Because Sunday is usually my free day. On Saturday I just do these videos and on Sunday if I have a project in mind I just do the project I think not <laughs> I I was I started myself because I, I just could not do it I had lost the ability to do this craft terrible shame to me <laughs> so Yes, this was my January slash the end of December recap and I hope you liked this video. If it's all over the place, blame the sugar, I'm sorry. <laughs> blame the sugar and my character because I'm, I, I'm only two moods. One is this and the other one is like completely depressed me, so... Yes, I hope you like this video. I absolutely love to interact with you. And I think this needs like a huge addressing from my side because some of you wrote me some comments and I did not reply in the appropriate time. Right now I... I used to have a co-worker, colleague of mine, a few years back and she wrote to me two weeks ago and I just did not reply because I was over overwhelmed with emotion those two weeks ago and it still lasts till today so I still did not reply and I feel really bad and now I don't know if I should reply or just ignore it and say that talk it my own. <laughs> yes, so that's me. <laughs> I'm sorry. 
I can still say that I was depressed for two weeks, which I was, but yeah. <laughs> Not a nice thing to say to your ex-colleague who wrote really beautiful long message and I was just so thankful for her writing to me and everything and just remembering me and, and it was like so touching and feeling and the same goes with your comments because you you write all this stuff and I'm like I'm so touched and then I cannot answer so you should know I immersely wow immersely appreciate each and every comment every like and every everything that you do on this channel and i just love you all <laughs> thank you so much for being here supporting me and trying to communicate with me well it's kind of difficult i know and it's only my fault but I'm so thankful for you being here and if you like the content uh, please like and comment and subscribe I will make sure to answer <laughs> I'm sorry I promise and I will see you the next time and the next time will be my Dstash Chronicles which are starting on this channel soon bye bye